Today on How to Drink, I am making some of the worst cocktails I think that I have ever seen. These are drinks that uh, you invented. I asked you to ruin a cocktail by changing one word in its name, and boy, you delivered. I put these into a different order, but you know what? I'm gonna start with the last drink on my original list. The one that I think you probably wanna see the most, and this is courtesy of at Bullo247, the Golden Sour. Also at Zetagen said maybe a whiskey shower or something that's better. I don't know if it has to rhyme, but that just feels right. A golden sour or a whiskey shower? I mean, some of you might know where I'm going with this. We're gonna make a drink that can only be called a golden shower. And when I think of things that might taste like piss, I think of Jepson's Malort. Is there anything else I can throw in a golden shower? Oh yeah, of course there is. Hold on a second. Heaven knows you can't make a golden shower without golden schlager. Now I know exactly what this drink is gonna be. Let's add one ounce of lime juice. So that's our sour. Let's add our sweet one ounce of gold schlager. Typically a whiskey sour would be, you know, bourbon, lemon, and simple. I like an egg white in mine that makes them much better. This one, we're just gonna skip that on. And of course, two ounces of Chicago's finest, Jepson's Malort. Get some ice. Uh, where's my spoon? Did I leave it? I left it. Something else I can crack ice with around here? Uh, we could try the back of a knife. I don't know, I've never done such a thing. This is stupid. Close enough. I suppose this gold-rimmed beauty is just the kind of thing that a golden shower should go in. Drop an ice cube in there. And there it is, the golden shower. Thank you, Below247 and Zetagen, for this wonderful, magical cocktail. I want to point out, too, oh man, what a smell. It smells like the Christmas store. I want to point out, too, that this drink would have been the same whether I had gone with Bullo's Golden Sour or Zetagen's Whiskey Shower. It is a one word replacement, although the final result is. You know, titling-wise, we gotta call it a golden shower. Whoa! Oh, the cinnamon is a lie. Oh, no, it's not. There it is. Oh, wow! That is something else, man. That is caustic. The only thing that would make that worse is if the... Uh, creator of this had been eating like asparagus all day. That is bitter, bitter. It's like drinking, well, it's like drinking, you know, with a of cinnamon. I thought this would provide plenty of sweetness to it. Uh, it does not to counter offset the Malort. I mean, honestly, it's gonna be really hard to give more detailed notes than wow, 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 wee wah, that's bitter. Oh, I can smell cinnamon. So it actually starts out pretty innocuous, but very quickly, the bitterness ramps way up. It tastes like puke. It tastes like I've been very ill and throwing up. Ah, thank you, Bolo and Zatagin. You have successfully ruined a whiskey sour. You did it. You ruined the drink by changing one word. Yay, hooray. Top five, top seven. Worst drinks I've ever had on the show. That is really deeply foul. Next drink on the list is a Harvey Grandma banger, which is not creative at all, but I fucking love it. That is my style of humor. Harvey Grandma banger. I love that joke. So a Harvey Grandma banger is obviously a variation on a Harvey Wall banger, but grandma. I wasn't really sure where we were gonna start with replacements on the Harvey Wallbanger, but since it turns out my bottle of Galliano did not survive the move to the new studio, we're gonna replace the Galliano in this Harvey Grandma Banger. Now, like most people, and I'm not saying all people, but most people, I had two grandmas, one of whom was very fond of drinking blackberry brandy right from the bottle. Gregory, don't look at me like that. I, it's, I just take a little nip. Just a little nip. That, and I only have a little baby beer. She was convinced that anything that was called light beer was 3%, so it was just baby beer. She drank a lot of baby beer and blackberry brandy. 
Now, I don't have any blackberry brandy today. Let's talk about my other grandma who always kept a box of cherry cordials, which is, you know, it's, it's a cherry stuffed inside of chocolate surrounded by syrup. Let's go with that. That's a my grandma banger. Oh God. Let's just put that aside and make the drink. And by the way, I want to thank M Zait, M Z A I T E, for coming up with this wonderful idea, the Harvey Grandma Banger. I'm going to make this with all of the care in the world. One and a half ounces of our vodka, three quarters of an ounce of our cherry liqueur, which in this case is a Luxardo cherry sangue morlaco, and uh, three quarters of an ounce of our Tempest Fugit. Creme de cacao. Let's get our bar spoon of grandma perfume. Let's make it two bar spoons. Okay, okay, we want three ounces of orange juice. This is orange juice I juiced just before we started filming. Uh, big cube is smashy cubes. It's much easier than using a knife. By the way, all the glassware on the show, including this one, uh, is made by Visky. Visky makes beautiful glassware. If you want to pick up the glassware that I use on the show, as they are the official How to Drink glassware provider, you can use the link in the pin comp below or up here in the corner. You can use code How to Drink 15 at checkout. You're going to get 15% off beautiful glassware. Really good stuff. Compliments your bar. And the official glassware of a Harvey Grandma Banger. See what I did for you, Visky? Made you the official glassware of a Harvey Grandma Banger. Okay, so the appropriate garnish for a Harvey Grandma Banger is the same as a Harvey Wall Banger. It's an orange slice and a maraschino cherry. Maraschino cherry, if you want to be. Uh, that kind of person. There you go. That's a har Who gives a shit? It's a fucking Harvey Grandma Banger. Here I am, just a lonely man, slowly losing my mind, making a YouTube show about the worst drinks of all time. It's too sweet, but like, it doesn't taste like you're drinking poison. It's a chocolate cherry orange drink. You think the Harvey Grandma Banger is going to be the worst experience of your life until you try it and find out that it's a very experienced cocktail that knows a thing or two about a thing or two. <laughs> I don't detect the St. Germain at all, but I also think that if you upped it, it would very quickly overpower the cocktail. Chocolate cherry, orange sweet. Honestly, not a bad combination of things, but very much so just like candy. It's a Terry's orange ball and a um, cherry cordial smashed into each other. You know, it's good, but it's not an everyday kind of thing, that Harvey Grandma banger. You want to keep it for, you know, rare, rare and special occasions. Let's move it along to the next drink ruined by you, which was ruined by It's Shocky. I-T-Z-X-O-C-H-Y. I think that's how you would pronounce that. It's shocking. They suggested a cocktail, a whiskey salty. Obviously a play on the whiskey sour. I want to give every one of these drinks every opportunity to not be really, truly bad. And it doesn't seem exciting if I make every drink intentionally bad. So let's do our best. The obvious thing to do to make a whiskey salty would be to replace the lemon in a whiskey sour with um, an equal measure of saline solution. That seems extreme to me. So let's moderate that slightly. We're gonna do first a quarter ounce of lemon, which is just, you know, not much. I made some saline solution in anticipation of this. Since we're breaking it all up, I think we did a quarter ounce. Now we gotta do three quarters of an ounce of saline solution. That is a lot. We needed a bourbon. We're gonna use Garrison Brothers bourbon because that's what I felt like grabbing off my shelf. Two ounces. And with that very small amount of lemon plus the salt, I'm just guessing at the amount of sugar I should add. Let's do a half an ounce. Honey, I just got home from work. Would you mind shaking me up a whiskey salty? I would love a whiskey salty while I sit on the couch and ignore the children. There it is. Ooh. Oh God, it smells good. <laughs> wow! That is bad! <laughs> the absolute best thing you can say about it is that at a certain point in its evolution, it tastes like salt peanuts. Let me clean up while I process the experience I'm, I'm having. The experience that I'm having, by the way, is questioning several life choices. 
This is a drink that stays with you. The, the amount of salt in it is um, high. I think we have adhered to the description, uh, to the name as obligated to do so. Damn it! Like seawater salt into bitter peanuts. And it just stays there in your mouth, apparently indefinitely. You know the crazy thing? I've done like, I don't know how many episodes of just like cursed cocktails and bad shots. And like most of them are like mayonnaise and hot sauce or mayonnaise and Jaeger or, you know, like ranch and whatever. We're three drinks in on this episode and already these are the worst cocktails I have ever had in my life. Thank you, YouTube fans, for responding to my community post. Up next, cilantro julep. Doesn't that sound great? On how to drink or how not to drink. I don't know where my uh, julep cups are anymore. So we're gonna make this drink in one of my silver blue blazer mugs. It'll be fine for this cilantro. And how much cilantro do we add? Nobody knows because no one's ever made a cilantro julep. I think we're gonna go with a half, yeah, whatever, a quarter to a half an ounce of simple. Depending on how sweet you like your cilantro julep, we're gonna add two ounces of bourbon. Circa the 1800s, Little Angostura bitters was not out of place in a mint julep. And I believe the same is true for a cilantro julep. So let's add, oh, I don't know, two, three dashes. Muddle that all up. The cilantro isn't quite as oily. It's not quite as aromatic in terms of flavor as mint is. So we gotta get a little aggressive with it. We're going to need crushed ice. Do you need an industrial grade ice shaver to make a cilantro julep? Obviously not. Do you have one? Because if the answer is yes, then do that. There it is. We're gonna need to add some more cilantro to it, obviously, just like a mint julep. Just really kind of go crazy. If you wanna go nuts, slap a straw in there. Enjoy your cilantro julep if you can. <sighs> For a second there, I thought I was all right. Wow. All right, so it's sweet and bourbon, and then that gives way into an aftertaste that is like plastic on fire. I think that's appropriate to describe it as. When you drive past a car on the parkway or on the highway and it's on fire, yeah, that's kind of what it tastes like. Oh man, it's just whiskey with a with a much worse aftertaste. That's what it is. I don't want any more, please. I have to like live today, you know what I mean? Thank you, Eppenbast5231. Thank you for your idea of the cilantro julep. Two more drinks in this abomination. Up next, a death on the beach. So it's a sex on the beach with death in it. Now, a sex on the beach is ill-advised, but you gotta do what you gotta do. Do it. That's where it's gonna happen. That's where it's gonna happen. And I do, I want you to go out there and make it happen. I think all of us need to get laid. But moving on, a sex on the beach would be one and a half ounces of vodka, half an ounce of peach schnapps, half an ounce of Chambord or creme de cassis, one and a half ounces of orange juice, one and a half ounces of cranberry juice. And then you, you make that a death on the beach. What do I do to make a death on the beach? I think we replace the Chambord with Absinthe. Absinthe is like one of the most potent flavors. I mean, like we keep it in an atomizer or a dasher, you know, like a little spritz of absinthe from a perfume bottle is enough to really just like bathe a drink in absinthe. So I hope that we can taste anything but absinthe when we make our death on the beach, but I can't promise we will. So let's start with one and a half ounces of vodka. Yeah, boy. Remember Flavor of Love? Of all of the reality shows that emerged from the previous writer's strike, Flavor of Love might be my favorite. We want half an ounce of peach schnapps. 
peach tree from the Kuiper. We want one and a half ounces of orange juice, one and a half ounces of cranberry juice, half an ounce of absinthe. We're using uh, St. George today, which is a, a fine absinthe. Let's do an open pour into this beautiful Olmec inspired tiki mug from Visky Glassware the official provider of all the glassware here on how to drink. Do I want to garnish it? I really don't care, but I think an orange slice would be appropriate. Beautiful. A death on the beach. Tastes like toothpaste. God, that's weird. Why'd that happen? How did that happen? That's bizarre. Who could have guessed that an ounce and a half of vodka, half an ounce of peach schnapps, half an ounce of absinthe, an ounce and a half of orange juice, and an ounce and a half of cranberry. It tastes like, like toothpaste, basically. That's some wackadoodle shit. There's the absinthe. Peach and absinthe, they're frenemies? They go together better than they should. Absinthe is up front, large and in charge. Mike and Ike, mm. You know, I like it, but I don't know if I like it here. That flavor segues into cranberry briefly, but then straight through cranberry, right into peach schnapps. On the whole, the drink is uh, remarkably balanced in a weird way because it's not overly sweet, but it's also not like so dry or tart that you can't drink it, which is weird because like you want this drink to be so repellent that you're not obligated to drink it. But like the reality is if you accidentally ordered this off of a menu, you would probably get through half of it before you decided like, no, I, d I don't like that. It does have like a note that tastes like some kind of a solvent. Oh, dry cleaning. That's what it is. The death on the beach came from Keftastical on YouTube. Thank you, Keftastical, for that wonderful, wonderfully horrible idea. Thank you. Let's move this train of horrors right along to this submission by Mitchell Klein. Not a view curry, but a Drew curry. That is exactly where I'm at in terms of stupid jokes, the Drew curry. Now, I was a Big fan of the Drew Carey show back in the 90s. Loved that. One of my favorite sitcoms at the time. Uh, View Carre is uh, uh, the old square, which is what you would call the French Quarter if indeed you were French. I am not, so I call it a Drew Carre. Let's start with our rye. We're going to use high and wicked rye. We're going to need an ounce of rye whiskey. This is a stirred drink, obviously. Typically at this juncture, a view curie would call for cognac. We are going to opt for Mr. Black coffee liqueur, an ounce of that. So this drink also typically calls for sweet vermouth. Uh, you know what else is sweet? Beer. The Drew Carey Show featured a beer called Buzz Beer that was a caffeinated beer. Let's throw an ounce of Miller High Life. Now we're going to add some Benedictine. Benedictine is of course an herbal liqueur. Probably want two, three bar spoons of this stuff. Two dashes each of Angostura and Peixos bitters. Crack that ice. Here we go. A Drew Carré. A View Carré is garnished with a lemon twist and so is a Drew Carré. Oh, looking good. And there it is, a Drukery. Sure is brown. Let's give this beautiful cocktail a try. Oh, lemon and beer. That's all you smell is lemon and beer, which is surprisingly like Fruit Loop cereal. Not the exact same, but surprisingly similar. Very, very similar. If you're ever trying to fuck with somebody and you don't want them to know the horrible nightmare cocktail you're about to feed them. You know, if it's something from the cursed cocktail, list, throw a lemon twist on it. They'll never know. I don't got any toast for this, except for the price is right. I'm not gonna lie. That, at the very least, has potential. It's weird as hell. Very weird. But you know what? By far, like, the best drink of this episode. It's, it's coffee and lemon, which are actually surprisingly complimentary flavors. The beer is really not super loud in there. It is adding some sweetness and maltiness and sort of a bottom end to the drink. The, the rye 
I'm not sure I'm picking up on the rye. I'm not really sure I'm picking up on much else at this point, actually. I'm not really picking up on the rye, but it is providing a proofy bottom to this drink. And I think that if you were to swap it for like vodka, you would notice its absence. So I would encourage you not to do so. The two dashes of bitters, am I grabbing onto them? I probably am and I'm not realizing it because they would fall straight into the inside of the coffee flavor profile and they would sort of accentuate that. In fact, now I'm picking up some pay shows at the very end here. The Benedictine. I think you could probably skip the Benedictine though. I actually think you might swap the Benedictine for Maraschino if you were really trying to work this drink up. I'm not doing it today. I can't, man. I'm so, I'm so fucked up right now. That's a Drew Curry. Thank you, Mitchell Klein, for the least bad submission in this episode. You truly are my savior. I love you. When I asked you all to ruin drinks by replacing one word, I got so many replies. I picked six for this episode, but the truth of the matter is a lot of them have been left unmade and they could be made. If this episode does well, I will definitely do it again and make more of these replace one word, ruin a cocktail drinks. Truly unhinged shit here, guys. You have found new depths to plumb in the world of foul mixology. Anyway, thank you for watching. This has been How to Drink, the show about making cocktails and how to drink them, or in this case, how not to make cocktails and how to avoid them like the plague. And if you've enjoyed this, well, let me tell you something. I've been making this show for many years. There are so many episodes of How to Drink. I'm gonna put up a couple of them now. I will see you next week with another episode of How to Drink. Until then, I love you. Good night and good luck. Be good to each other because nobody else will.